Hello friends, it's The Stitches. Today I have a sewing project from the English Gothic and Later Bibles. Each GLB issue comes with sewing patterns, and in this particular volume there's a pair of shorts that I've been wanting to make for a long time. The pattern for the shorts is from the musician Kana, who is an important figure in Lolita fashion history. Kana collaborated with the magazine frequently, so if you're interested in Lolita fashion, you've probably seen photos of her outfits even if you've never heard of her music. I've been a big fan of Kana's aesthetic since I was a teenager, and the GLB collabs have always been a huge source of inspiration for me, so I'm incredibly excited to make these shorts. Before tracing my pattern and cutting anything out, I first gave the instructions a thorough read. I'm going to give a warning that if you ever want to make these shorts yourself, I do not recommend it for beginners. This video is much more vlog than tutorial. The directions basically assume that you already know how to do things like install a front fly zipper and give very little actual instruction, aside from telling you what order to do things in. I made very little attempt to follow them in the end anyway, since I ended up making so many alterations to the pattern, so we can basically just disregard all of this. This is the pattern laid out. I just got a new cutting table to make doing stuff like this easier, but I had already done this process by the time it arrived. The pattern sheet looks pretty chaotic at first glance, and at second and third and all of the other glances too. All of the pieces for every pattern in the magazine are on both sides of this one single sheet of paper. This should make it pretty obvious that you're intended to trace the pattern pieces as opposed to cutting them out. Luckily, I have a lot of tracing paper left over from college art classes, and I've been out of college for over half a decade, so I'm actually just sort of looking for excuses to use it up. Each pattern is printed in a different color ink in order to distinguish the pieces from each other. That way you aren't using pattern pieces from, say, two different shirts at the same time, although I will say this probably wasn't the most accessible way to go about including patterns in a magazine. There are three different patterns on this one side of the paper insert, one in black, one in pink, and it isn't super visible on camera, or in real life for that matter, but the third one is printed in yellow ink. Lucky for me, the shorts were the pattern printed in black, which was inarguably the easiest one to read. After I have all of my pieces traced and cut out, I'm going to use some muslin to create a mock-up with the main pattern pieces and determine sizing. Because fun fact, there were no measurements listed anywhere, and everything came in one size. I also noticed when I was looking at the pattern pieces that there were no darts marked, and the instructions inform you to use darts to fit the pants in the back. I tried to make out what was going on in the photos, but the pictures included are a bit too dark, and I couldn't really tell what was happening with the finer details. But I did manage to dig up a scan of the original Japanese version, and the finer details are a bit easier to make out. I'm just going to assume that this was some sort of translation issue, because those are definitely pleats and not darts. I decided to use darts instead of pleats for shaping anyway though, because that's just my preference. I decided against filming the construction process for each of my mock-ups because I knew I would need to make several anyway, and that just seemed unnecessarily tedious. So instead, let's have a little fashion show. The original pattern was plenty long enough, I wound up shortening it. However, it was way too tight. I needed to add several inches of wiggle room, raise the waist, and insert extra space in the back to create darts with. I also don't really understand the point of pants that don't have pockets, so I built those into the pattern as well. That gives us mock-up number two. The new length is comfortable, but the pattern pieces need to be reshaped at the waist. I had an inch too much space at the sides and an inch too little space at the crotch. The obvious answer to that being take an inch from one side of the pattern and add it to the other side. I was also very pleased with the addition of the pockets. Mock-up three is pretty well fitted. I wanted to test the pocket technique because I was hoping I could get away with not stitching the pockets down to the front of the shorts, but it just looks way better stitched down. Now that the main body of the pattern shorts is done, it's time to redraft the waistband and the cuffs to fit. That brings us to mock-up four. The zipper has been ripped out of this one since I ended up reusing it. I wound up making a completely new waistband instead of using the one included with the pattern. My waistband still needed a little bit of fixing up prior to cutting my final fabric, but at this point I feel pretty confident moving forward. For my final garment, I'm using this incredibly pretty black and hot pink plaid that I bought from an independent fabric shop the last time I managed to get out of town. I don't often splurge on new fabric, but this was really nice and I wanted something special for this project. I wanted to do something completely different with my suspenders than what's included in the pattern. I had this hot pink cotton webbing in my supply stash that matched the hot pink in my plaid, so it was absolutely perfect for this project. 
My first step was to measure and cut out a thin strip of fabric. I want my suspenders to be solid pink on one side and covered with fabric on the other. Since it's been a few projects since I cleaned out my serger and it definitely seemed like it was time, I figured I'd do it on camera to show you how much fluff comes out. And it's also just kind of a very pleasing process. Now that the machine is clean and re-threaded, I surged the edges of that thin strip of fabric. I didn't technically need to do this, but I want my suspenders to be as durable and long-lasting as possible. Taking this over to the ironing table, I flipped the serging over to the wrong side and thoroughly pressed it down. After that, it gets pinned to the hot pink webbing wrong side down. Then over at the sewing machine, I stitched it as close to the edges as I could. I didn't film myself attaching all the hardware, but I feel like it's a fairly self-explanatory process. Because I wanted to be even more extra for some reason, I added some decorative grommets to the suspenders as well. Here's one suspender with grommets and one without. I just feel like they add a little something. Using an awl, I opened up a hole to insert the grommet pieces into. I couldn't quite get my holes big enough without fabric distortion, so I had to cut a few threads. And since I did have to cut threads, I used some fray check around the grommet base to protect the webbing from doing that thing that grommet belts do. You know the thing. Fray check will stain some fabrics, but it was pretty invisible once it dried on the cotton webbing. A good smack with a hammer later and these grommets are going nowhere. At this point, my suspenders are done, so I'll set them aside and start cutting out my garment pieces. My first step to constructing my shorts will be to install the pockets into the pants front. My pockets consist of three pieces, as you can see in this little diagram that I hastily threw together. Pieces A and B won't be visible on the final garment, so I've cut them out of some lining scraps that were left over from a thrifted garment I altered. Piece C, however, will be visible, so we'll cut it from some plaid fabric. I'm gonna start by stitching pocket piece A to the front of the shorts right sides together along to the curved seam at the top of the pocket piece. I'll also stitch pocket pieces B and C to each other, right sides together as well. Next, I'm gonna take everything over to the ironing table and press my seams to prepare them for top stitching. The seam on the lining piece created by joining B and C is turned down over the lining and pressed. The pocket piece on the front of the shorts gets turned to the wrong side and pressed in place. Then those seams will be top stitched so the final garment looks nice and clean. The next step is to attach the back of the pocket to the front of the pocket. We'll start by pinning the bottom of the pocket pieces right sides together. Laid flat, the right side of the back of the pocket and the right side of the shorts fabric should both be facing up. Then we'll take this to the serger and stitch what will become the pocket hem. Now we'll pin the back of the pocket to the front of the shorts. This involves a lot of careful smoothing of the fabric to make sure there's no wrinkling or folding. And then at the sewing machine, we'll just baste this. Eventually the pants front will be sewn to other pieces, so for now we just want the pockets to behave like an extension of the pants front, as if this is all one piece of fabric. This is also where you should stitch the pocket hem to the front of the shorts, but I completely forgot that I had to do that part until later on. The front of the pants can be set aside for now. Next we'll be stitching the darts in the back of the pants. I'm just using the serger to make these because it's by far one of the simplest methods. The ends are tied off and then the excess serger tails are cut away. The next step is actually not to pin the leg fronts to the leg backs, right sides together at the side seams, but uh, that's what we're doing I guess. Despite skipping steps, we'll search the side seams, and while we're at it we'll also search along the seam allowance of the crotch seam. I'm not searching the crotch seam together yet, I just want the seam allowance to be finished for when I install the zipper. This is a super convenient time to remember that I wanted to add a decorative zipper detail to the front of the shorts. I had a hard time finding cool decorative zippers locally, so I got some regular ones and swapped out the zipper poles to make them more interesting. Then I just have to figure out my placement on the front of the pant leg and pin them in place. And as I've mentioned previously, sewing things onto tubes of fabric like legs and sleeves is not the most aesthetic process. Next, it's time to turn our attention to the cuffs. Each one consists of two front pieces and two back pieces. First, I'll attach the fronts to the backs, right sides together. 
After pressing the seams, the other cuff fabric is pinned right sides together to the inner lining of the cuffs along the top, which in this case is technically the bottom hem of the shorts, it just gets turned up to become a decorative bit at the bottom of the pant leg. This gets taken back over to the iron and pressed after being turned right sides out. Back at the sewing machine, our pressed seam is top stitched. It took me an embarrassing amount of contemplation to figure out which way to pin the cuffs to the pant legs. What you want to do is turn the pant legs inside out and pin the cuff right side to wrong side. After serging these pieces together, we'll turn the pant legs back right side out. The seam is pressed, and then the cuff is turned up and the seam is pressed again. To permanently hold my cuffs in place, I'll top stitch along the new bottom edge of the pant legs. So here we have our two completed pant legs. Now it's time to join them together and insert the zipper. I'll mark the length of the fly front with a pin so I know where to stop stitching the crotch seam. Then the crotch seam is pinned right sides together. The seam is stitched from the back of the pants up to the pin marker in the front. Now the legs are joined except for an opening in the front. This is where I'll install my fly front. For stability, my facing pieces are backed with interfacing. Then I'll use the serger to finish the curved edge on my first piece. My second piece is the one with the extra weird curves on the bottom. That one gets folded in half as shown. And then on this piece, I'll serge along the straight edge as well as the raw curved bit on the bottom. The first single layered fly front facing piece is pinned right side down onto the front of the pants where the crotch seam was left open. Then it gets searched down. Then the zipper is pinned right side down along the seam line. At the sewing machine, I'll stitch the zipper tape on the side of the teeth that faces the crotch seam. If my description is too confusing, I'll include a tutorial for fly front zippers in the description of this video. But when you sew, the zipper teeth should be on the left of the machine needle. Next, the bit I just sewed gets flipped over into the inside of the garment and pressed in place. This is pinned so it doesn't move around. Then it's back over to the sewing machine where it gets stitched down. With one side of our zipper finished, we'll move on to the other side. I'll start by turning the seam allowance on the pants front to the wrong side and pressing it down. Then I'll take the free side of the zipper and pin it to the front of the pants. We're not quite ready to stitch anything yet. First, we'll revisit that double-sided version of the fly front facing. This is pinned down behind the zipper to create a little flap that serves as a barrier between the zipper and the body. Now we're ready to stitch everything in place. In addition to sewing in this half of the zipper, I'll also tack down the curved bit on the bottom of the fly front flap. After that, the zipper is completed. The very last thing we need to make for our pants is the waistband. My outer waistband pieces are interfaced, the lining doesn't necessarily need it. These pieces get surged right sides together at the side seams. Once the seams are given a good press, the front of the waistband is ready to be stitched to the lining. I'm surging along the top edge and the sides, leaving the seam where the waistband will connect to the pants free. I was originally planning on surging the waistband to the pants, but I wasn't sure how well the machine would handle going over the thick webbing pieces that I inserted for my suspenders to hook onto, so I used my regular sewing machine instead. The waistband then gets a very thorough press to prepare it for top stitching. The last step is to finish off the waistband with a couple buttons. This pair appears to be something I picked up at a vintage shop. To make buttonholes using my machine, I just pop one of the buttons onto the back of the buttonhole foot. This is how the machine knows how big to make the hole. I marked where I wanted my buttonholes to go with a chalk pencil, and then all I have to do is just gently guide the fabric while the machine does all the work. I do have a buttonhole chisel, and I highly recommend using those instead, but mine it desperately needs to be sharpened, so I'm very carefully using a seam ripper to open up the buttonhole instead. And that's followed up with some free check to keep the buttonholes looking crisp. Lastly, we'll hand stitch the buttons onto the waistband underneath the holes. And with that, this project is finished. So let's look at the final shorts. I am super happy with how these turned out. The decorative zippers are by far my favorite detail. It was well worth going through four mock-ups to make sure my final pattern was comfortable. I'm wearing it here with a bodysuit that I made using a simplicity pattern. 
There are a couple different ways to wear the suspenders. I can leave them hanging on the sides, cross them in the back, or wear them on my shoulders like the original pattern. I could also take the suspenders off altogether and hang something else on the attached D-rings instead. I'm so excited to have these shorts. They very quickly become one of my favorite pieces in my wardrobe, and I can't wait to coordinate them in different outfits. Let me know if there are any other projects in the English GLBs that you want me to sew. There's definitely a hat in this same volume that I'd really like to make for myself. But that's all the time we have for today. I hope this video was enjoyable, even if it wasn't really a tutorial, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!